I got one. I got grass and one. Might be a little group there. Black grass bass and a little crankbait on the outside edge. Got some black spots on his throat there. Very dark. They say these black spots on them are a sign of a healthy fishery. The black, anytime a fish has these black pigments on them. See if there's another one. So anytime you're on any type of grass fishery, where the fish are heavily related to grass. I don't care if you're flipping, cranking, top watering, whatever you're doing. If you ever catch a fish, get a bite, anything, you wanna make sure you stop and fish that whole area really thoroughly because nine out of 10 times, there's something holding that fish there. Now it may have only been holding one fish, but fish and grass just tend to gang up big time and uh, all times of year, really. And uh, so you, anytime you get a bite, you really, really wanna fish that area thoroughly. Over the years, I struggled on grass terms a lot because growing up in the area I did in the south, we don't really have big groups of fish most of the time on, on our, my type lakes. It's just, you know, singles, maybe twos or threes. So I would be on a grass lake, I'd fish through somewhere, catch one, two fish maybe, and like, oh cool, I caught two, you know, and end up fishing somewhere else because I just only caught two. And then uh, come tournament time, run down the lake and you see half the top 10 on day two fishing the area where I had two bites and I just didn't milk that area enough to really get an idea of what it was. So I always recommend even alternating baits just just I mean I'm not saying sit there an hour but you know give it a solid five ten minutes after you catch one to be sure that it's not a big school. I don't think it's a giant but it is a bass. Not a giant. Oh, came off. Let's see if we got a bigger one. He smoked it though, like absolutely smoked it. Just going down the outside edge with a small crankbait and uh, really just a good way to cover water. Just Getting the right crankbait to cover water without getting it mired up in the grass that is here is the, real important for being efficient doing this because we're not really we're not really targeting anything specific here. We're mo more just trying to fish the grass itself on the outside edge, and uh, doing that you have to have the right crankbait to tick that grass but not get mired up. You'll end up snatching it off or fighting grass all day if not. So, got a small crankbait here. It's about five, six foot deep on this outside edge and I got a crankbait just barely ticking the top of the grass coming down through here. We're, we're near the deep water. As you know, the fish is getting getting late in the year. The grass is kind of, it's not real healthy. It's got cold, we have some wind. So the fish are getting ready for their winter time patterns, which out here they relate to grass all the time, but they, the colder it gets, they like to get on the deeper edge of grass or relate to that deeper eelgrass mix and hydrilla kind of near the edge in deeper water. So I'm just out here on the edge near the current, just going down the outside, trying to catch some fish, getting ready for that wintertime thing. They're still feeding better though. As it gets colder, you have to fish a lot slower. I still use reaction baits, but you have to fish them a lot slower and more deliberate. Now you can kind of cover water a little quick, quicker and still get those bites. I see a lot of people, they throw their crankbait out and they get down the grass and they'll, you know, snatch it, like, which cleans it. But I think if you have to do that, you're not fishing effectively. You're your bait's going a little too deep, so you're getting mired up a lot. And I don't think, just from my history fishing grass with reaction baits, whether it's a rattle bait, like a rattling vibe, or a small oh, crankbait, if you have to snatch snatch, you don't get a lot of bites. The key to getting this grass is like, I'm in some grass now, you just wanna kinda of be able to pull it through it. Maybe give it a little snatch to clear it off, but if you're getting like truly mired up in it, I like to go to heavier line, or a, a shallower diving crankbait works, but you don't even have to go to a shallower diving crankbait. Where, whereas you're throwing on 12, just go up to 14 or even 16. And uh, I think that's the better way to adjust your bait 
to get it to come through effectively. You want it to hit the grass, but not get choked out in the grass. So when I'm cranking grass, it varies greatly. You're, my setup doesn't change much. I always like, I like this, when I'm throwing small crankbaits, we're not talking like big deep diving crankbaits. When I'm throwing small crankbaits, like small square bills or like this small Yozuri 3DS crank that I love to throw, I like a small reel. I use the MGX. I use a 6.4 to 1. A lot of people crank with like fives and I don't like that slow. I can slow myself down with a 6.4 enough to make it effective. And so I go with a 6.4 to one, this MGX, mostly just for ease of casting and reeling all day. It doesn't wear you out, small reel. And I've got my, what I like to throw a small crankbaits on is a, my Century jerkbait rod and it's a 611 medium. And the smaller rod, what it allows, it's a softer tip and it allows with these little bitty hooks on this bait I mean, the hooks are tiny, so you don't need, if you get too stiff of a rod, then you just pull the hooks out of it. You want enough backbone to pull your bait through the grass without, and be able to clean it if it does get mired up. But uh, the smaller rod really keeps, when the fish bites the bait, it loads up a little bit and lets the fish get it fully in their mouth. And as far as line goes, my kind of go-to line size, I would say, is either 12 or 14 pound test on these small crankbaits. If I want the bait, let's say the grass I'm throwing a four to six foot diving crankbait. Let's say the grass tops out, you know, it's just a little bit deeper than that. Let's say a seven. Now I might go down to 10, size 10 line, and that'll get it down a little bit more. Or let's say that the grass tops out three foot under the surface, and I'm kind of getting mired up. I'll go up to 16. I have gone up to 20. The problem when you get as heavy as 20, these small crankbaits just don't run quite as effective. The heavier line, they don't vibrate as well. So I would say vary between 10 to 16 pound test, and you can change two or three feet as far as the diving depth of your crankbait without actually changing crankbaits.